Hi, this is my 81st video on financial math for actuarial exam 2. Three videos ago I said I was doing what might be my longest, hardest video. Well, this one might top it. It's going to be a pretty long thing. In fact, I've done some of the drawing for this problem ahead of time to help me go through it in a reasonable amount of time. It's a modified version of problem 6.46 in the second edition of Kellison. I'm using Kellison a few times here because Kellison's book has more problems related to continuous payments. When an outstanding loan balance is linearly decreasing, that's the assumption of the problem, we're going to find a bunch of things. We're going to be finding the continuous rate of payment function, the thing we've been calling KT recently, the total payment function, which is really the integral of KT, not taking the time value of money into account. We'll also be finding the amounts of principal and interest paid as functions of time cumulatively, and their derivatives, their rates of change. And yeah, you can see in the background here, I've got some drawings pre-made already, and in fact, a bunch of underlining pre-done pre already. Uh, and in fact, this problem is going to go over two pages. I've got some other graphs on the second page. It's these graphs that pertain to the problem description themselves, and these graphs are going to pertain to the typical kind of situation, which is not exactly what's described here. We've got a loan of one that's being amortized over a 10-year period, with continuous payments, it's a continuous payment stream, which vary in such a fashion that the outstanding balance is linear. Okay, that's the situation on the next page. This blue graph here is a linear decreasing function. It's the outstanding balance function for this problem. But again, I'm using this first page to talk more generally about what might be going on in the more typical kind of situation. I think it'll be worth it. The force of interest delta is 10% or 0.1. Three things to do, A, B, and C, right there. Uh, actually, and in each part, there's a few things to do. First, part A, find the continuous rate of payment function, the thing we've been calling KT. And it's essentially its integral, the cumulative payment function. How much have you paid cumulatively over time? Not taking the time value of money into account, we're just integrating K. Part B, find the cumulative principal repaid function, which I'm calling CPT. The C stands for cumulative. This is not standard notation as far as I know, but it seems to make some sense. Which and We're also going to plug in t equals 5 into that, the principal repaid over the first five years, and find its derivative, the rate at which principal is repaid. The derivative of CPT is often called p bar t. In fact, in Kellison's book, Kellison uses that notation, p bar t, for that derivative. Part C, find the cumulative interest paid function, CIT, and also over the first five years. C, again, standing for cumulative, cumulative, find its derivative, the rate at which interest is being paid. I bar T is the derivative of CIT. All right, so again, before we tackle this particular situation, I want to talk more generally about relationships between all these functions in the tip, more typical kind of situation where your total payment is at a constant rate in, say, dollars per year or something like that. So I've got two kinds of graphs here that I'm going to graph, and actually... In each of these pictures, I'm going to draw four different graphs. I've got antiderivatives and derivatives. Money is a function of time, and rate of change of money is a function of time. Money per unit time as a function of time. I've got your typical kind of outstanding balance function uh, that we talked about in the, when you have level payments or payments at a constant rate this function is going to be decreasing and concave down. Okay, we saw that before. KT in this case, that's your constant level rate. That's a constant function. The derivative of OBT is down here. You can see that's negative because OBT in this typical kind of case is decreasing. In recent videos, we've talked about a relationship, a differential equation really. Let me write it down here for the outstanding balance as a function of time. Its derivative is the force of interest times the function itself minus the rate of payment. And in recent videos, we've used this differential equation and we used the method of integrating factors to solve for OBT. And in fact, we just called it B when KT was a given function. Actually, in the second page here in this video, we're going to turn this relationship around and we're going to use the fact that we know OBT as we do in this problem description to figure out kt, we can solve this differential equation for kt. It will be delta times obt minus the derivative of obt. And again, we'll use that on the second page. There's some other relationships that are worth knowing here in all this. 
Uh, and I'm not going to derive these rigorously, but they, they should make some, some good sense in relationship to these functions that we're talking about here. I mean, before in a video, I talked about why this equation really makes good sense. The rate of change of your outstanding balance as a function of time, well, it's going to go up if, the, if you're not making any payments. Uh, with relative rate of change delta, it's going to be proportional to itself, but when you make payments, you're taking money out, um, or in this case, you're making payments to the loan at a certain rate, your balance is going to be going down if k of t is large enough. This quantity here, delta times obt, uh, itself can be thought of as a rate of change of another function that's described up here. It's the derivative of the cumulative interest function, what I'm also calling I bar t, and again, Kellison uses that notation right here, and that should make good intuitive sense as well. The rate at which uh, the interest is being paid, the cumulative interest function, how fast is that increasing? It's proportional to the outstanding balance. The higher your balance, the faster you're going to be paying interest. The lower your balance, the lower you're going to be paying interest. That's not a rigorous derivation, but I hope that makes good sense. There's some other relations that are important. Um, another relationship that's important and I hope is pretty uh, clear is that the cumulative principal repaid plus the outstanding balance is always equal to the loan amount for any moment in time, right? Essentially, this for any moment in time here, this distance represents CPT. That's how much you paid toward principal cumulatively over time. This relationship should be pretty clear. And I can also differentiate both sides of this equation. The derivative of CPT is what I'm calling P bar T. I can say P bar T plus the derivative of OB, the outstanding balance as a function of time, is the derivative of L, which is a constant, which is zero. So that leads me to say that P bar T is the opposite of the derivative of OBT. I've got the derivative of OBT down here. I could reflect it across the horizontal axis to get the, the graph of P bar T. Let's graph now both CPT and its derivative, P bar T, CPT up here and P bar T down here based on what I've just said here. When I add together OBT with CPT, I got to get L. If you think about that, that means that the graph of CPT has to look like this. This is the graph of CPT itself as a function of t. This distance is the value of CPT. It's this distance right here at a particular value of time. Its graph looks like this. If you add the red and blue graphs, you're going to get this horizontal line at L. Likewise, like I just said a minute ago, p bar t is the opposite of the derivative of obt, so reflect this graph across the horizontal axis, and you are going to get the graph of p bar t, which again is the derivative of cpt. Okay, uh, what else can be said in all this? You can also say that uh, kt is i bar t plus p bar t. Maybe I should have used bar notations with k from the past, but that wasn't standard. I'm just using standard notation. The kt was notation from Kellison. The bar notation here with these derivatives is notation from, well, the k was notation from Broberman. These bar notations were from Kellison. I hope it makes good sense that the total rate of payment is the sum of the rates of payment that goes toward interest and goes toward principal. And since the graphs are the integrals of these things that I'm interested in, I'll go through the origin. Um, that means I can say that ckt equals cit plus cpt as well. And those graphs go through the origin. There's no constant I need to add here to make this the same. So what else can I graph in all this? What am I trying to get across here? Well, I can graph, uh, let's see. I know i bar t and p bar t have to add up to kt. In this, in this example, kt is constant. Here's the graph of p bar t. What do I need to add to that to get the graph of kt? I need to add something that looks about like this. And in fact, its value at zero does turn out, or at n does turn out to be zero. 
at the last moment in time, you are essentially your instantaneous rate of change of interest paid is zero. This distance right here, let's see. Uh, something's wrong here. Oh, I know what's wrong. P bar T has to go up to KT. Just have to add together to give you KT. At that last moment in time, the rate at which money is going toward principal is the entire rate of payment, and the rate at which money is going toward interest is zero. Okay, so I fixed that. Uh, anything else that's worth putting in here? I think it would be worth going back up here in here and putting the graphs of CIT and CKT. CKT in this typical kind of situation is an integral of a horizontal line. It's going to be a straight line with a positive slope, this horizontal line being a positive value. CKT looks about like this. And it's got to go higher than L because you're paying not just the principal but also interest. And how about CIT, the integral of I bar, the I bar down, it's down here again. That's I bar T. Its integral is CIT, and in fact, again, CIT plus CPT equals CKT. So at the end, this distance here has to be CIT. Uh, CIT is going to be concave down. It's going to look about like this. That's CIT. Okay? Now let's kind of abstract. Uh, lots of different things to try to keep track of. You, you may want to re-watch it and rethink about it. I'm now going to go on to trying to apply these ideas to the problem at hand, where the graphs start out this way. I'm given that OBT is a linear decreasing function of time, and in fact, the loan amount is 1 and the term of the loan is 10. Here would it be its derivative, by the way, negative 0.1. You could even write its equation down. In fact, I did that already up here. Like I said uh, on the previous page, I can now find kt, which is part of the goal of the problem, is to find kt and its integral. Um, I wrote down before that kt is delta times obt minus the derivative of obt. And here we actually do want formulas for the actual problem at hand. Delta is 0.1, 10%. obt, you can see, is right there, 1 minus 0.1t. And its derivative would be negative 0.1. This simplifies to 0.1, uh, what would it be? Minus 0 0.01t plus 0 0.1, 0 0.2 minus 0 0.01t. The graph of kt, which I wanted to graph down here, say in green, would be a linear decreasing function with a vertical intercept of 0.2 and a slope of negative 0 0.01. Its value at 0 is 0.2. Its value at 10 is 0 0.1. It's going to be a line about like this. So in this situation, when the outstanding balance as a function of time looks like this, the rate of payment function looks like that. Okay, so that's part of what to do, part of part A here. Now do the integral of this to find the cumulative total payment function, and the graph has to go through the origins, so I can just integrate without a plus c. ckt is going to be a quadratic function uh, with positive slope initially at t equals 0, and it's going to be concave down because you've got a negative coefficient for t squared. I believe it's going to look about like this. Let me just graph it um, and not worry about its value at time 10. You could plug in t equals 10 to figure out its value at time 10. Okay, But it's going to look about like that. All right, what next? Part B, find um, CPT, its value at t equals 5, and its derivative. What could we use? Um, we could use, let's see, the fact that P, well, let's find PT first, actually, because, again, PT plus, let's see, or CPT, CPT plus OBT. It's easy to get mixed up on this has to equal the loan amount, which is 1 in this case. So CPT is 1 minus OBT. We can find a formula in this example. That's 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 minus 0.1t. 
This simplifies to 0.1t. CPT, which I'd want to graph up here, is a straight line with a slope of 0.1 going through the origin. Its value at time 10 is going to be 1 because the entire balance loan amount gets paid off by time 10. What's its derivative? P bar t is going to be a constant function, 0.1. Its graph will look like this. This was P bar t. And what's the value of CPT at t equals 5? How much of the loan is paid off after 5 years? Like that. That's going to be 0.1 times 5 is 0.5. Half the loan is paid off in this situation after five years. So now we've finished parts A and B. We're almost done. Part C. Find CIT, uh, CIT at time five and its derivative. Um, there's various things we can do here. We could use the fact that CIT, like I said on the previous page, plus CPT adds up to KT, or CKT, excuse me, so it would be CKT minus CPT. CKT is this function, 0.2t minus 0.005t squared. CPT is 0.1t. So this simplifies to 0.1t minus 0.005t squared. Its graph is a parabola as well, but the initial slope is smaller than the one for this one, or this one right here. Uh, so it looks something more like this. This is approximately what C, CIT looks like. This red one was CPT. Okay, and what about its derivative? What about I bar T? 0.1 minus 0.01t. It's going to look like this. That's i bar t. And ci sub 5, how much interest have you paid by time 5? Plug in 5 here, you get 0.1 times 5 minus 0 0.005 times 5 squared. 0 0.1 times 5 is 0.5. 5 squared is 25, times this is going to be 0 0.025. Um, looks like this is 0 0.04, is it not 0 0.0, I'm getting mixed up here, 0 0.0425, 0 0.0475. Um, no, sorry, 0.475. Okay, actually I'm not sure that that's right. I was thinking I'd get something different, but I don't feel like redoing this video, and it's already long enough as it is. Just realize this might be wrong, because I was thinking I got something different. But I think these graphs are right. I check those ahead of time. Um, value of C, okay, it's going to be there. I'm not positive that this is right. So. Maybe I'll do an add-on to this and I'll, after I check whether it's right or not. Well, I'm back and there was a mistake and the mistake was in the very end. I should have used my calculator and tried to do, instead of trying to do everything in my head here. Um, my mistake is that five squared, 25 times 0 0.005 is not 0.025. 25 times 0 0.005 is 0.125. This is 0.125, making the final answer 0.375, and that is the correct final answer. And by the way, as far as Kellison's problem, you know, I modified it. Uh, Kellison's problem really refers to mostly finding these values at time 5, and I just expanded on that greatly.